cats it's Ed nitrogen infused bud here I've been able to get some longer runs and more varied sessions in with the Hoka Rocket X2 I can safely say this is the best Hoka shoe that I've tried out so far let's dive into the details of this outlandish carbon plated racer Welcome back foam fanatics and cushioned connoisseurs. Ed Midsole Bud here with a lowdown on a shoe I'm really enjoying so far. You're gonna get my ever expanding experiences in the Hoka Rocket X2, a shoe purchased by me with my own cash. Thus, no soul is vetting my views before my valued viewers. Before we get to the lowdown, remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications too. Give this video a thumbs up like as well, that really helps out. And if you share it with your running buddies, I would be most appreciative. You can find me on Instagram, links are in the description. And come and join me on Strava as well and send some kudos love. So I took these out for some varied sessions recently over the last few weeks. Previous to my longer run from Sunday, I did some half mile reps with a half mile recovery in between those reps at my half marathon pace. The shoes felt absolutely fantastic for that type of use, light, nimble and engaging. Even very usable on the light recovery sections in between. Today though I had some easier base miles on the schedule and it was interesting to see how the shoe would perform at a more sustainable pace. So 10 miles on the books there, 16 kilometers in some warmer temperatures for the UK. I mean it might not be warm for you and your part of the world but here in the UK, 16, 17 degrees is somewhat uncomfortable even sometimes. Only light winds to make up for those testing conditions for the runners out there. Very typical route for me, heading out west around the edge of the town, near to the famous Leonardo airfield, then seeking shade wherever it was available, back through the opposite side of the airfield, and onto my well-trodden path towards home. Going through that lovely Nine Springs trail there is a wonderful place to run, and then a little way out towards Over Compton. Cue the NWA jokes right there. Seven minutes, 50 seconds per mile, one hour and 90 minutes total. About 315 feet of elevation, so it wasn't the flattest, I suppose. Over 80% Fact of what I ran in the Bristol half marathon last weekend. Keeping the heart rate very consistent there, about 133 beats per minute across the miles. I guess that's spot on really for an easier effort for me. That's roughly what I would expect. Wasn't really checking it while I was running. I was kind of running by effort, I suppose. I think it's good to do that sometimes making sure that you know when you're starting to stray into that aerobic effort. I think I managed to avoid going into that zone, all apart from a significant hill climb at some point in the run. So how did the shoes hold up? Pretty spectacularly well, that's how. In terms of the upper, no rubbing, no hot spots, no nothing. I laced up and never once did I ever think about the upper again. In warmer conditions, that transparent mesh is extremely breathable. Didn't find my feet sort of overheating at all. I really like the mesh on the side panels of the shoe. It really does let the foot breathe. Didn't really get sort of too damp from any sweat and there was no moisture build up whatsoever. I'm finding the lockdown on this one quite exceptional to be honest with you. The gusseted tongue really does grip around the foot very well. Some care must be taken when you do put the shoe on to ensure that that material wrapping doesn't sort of buckle or overlap. Just got to flatten it out and stop it from getting creased. Minimal care is needed then to get the required tension over the top of the foot. The tongue just stays out of the way. It's not overtly padded or anything. And you just get a really good contact to that midsole base. I found everything about the shoe, in fact, stays out of the way of the movement of your ankle. It doesn't like restrict the different angles that you kind of move your foot around. The shoe just seems to do what it needs to on your foot and doesn't really affect anything else. At steady pace today, the shoe's rocker is very prominent and I found it almost rolled me along to each mile without much thought whatsoever. It was nice to increase the pace at points just to see what the shoe can do, though I'm very aware of the pace range that's held within the Hoka Rocket X2 after my mile repeats at half marathon speed a little earlier that week. A grade adjusted pace today of seven minutes, 45 seconds per mile, shows perhaps I'm getting more accustomed to running in those warmer temperatures. And I think running that half marathon in Bristol the week before was very beneficial to my fitness. It might have been one of my slower half marathon races that I've done, but as a training tool, it was invaluable. I believe the midsole here is benefiting me from its lower drop. 
Now on this subject I have felt similar sensations when I used the Takumi Sen 8 from Adidas. Maybe something about this lower drop that's just working for my running form, the balance between the heel and the forefoot. Either way the rocker and the plate are far more prominent here in this shoe than others that I've tested out recently. Just felt really smooth and enjoyable even at slower paces. The midsole material here on the Hoka Rocket X2 is certainly on the softer side in terms of the sure durometer score. At this point in testing though I am finding that some of the paint is actually starting to come off the midsole. I'm not really that fussed about that. The actual midsole isn't degrading at all but if you're familiar with the Vaporfly 4% model you'll be very aware of what I'm talking about here. It seems like Hoka have painted the midsole material with something and it's just starting to flake off a little bit. I mean this midsole does have that awesome brittle like feeling we had in the Vaporfly 4% rather than the more rubbery type feel that we get in the current formulas. It's almost like a powdery white coating that's on here. Again, which is very close to that original Zoom X model. I like the softness here. It doesn't feel too compressive to me. I think the rocker takes care of quite a lot of things here. It's quite prominent as you get it on foot when you start walking around in the shoe, but this is a running shoe, so who cares? That rocker does facilitate a really fast cadence does make you want to speed up almost like throws you forward maybe it's a combination of that rocker and the lower drop between the heel to the forefoot in the rocket x that really just works for me outsole wise the shoes only had to deal with concrete slabs and some tarmac so far i did stray into some abrasive woodland paths and in fairness that's probably where the shoe picks up a bit of damage. I think the amount of rubber here is going to absorb any sort of road or pavement running easily. It's reasonably thick as well. Well, certainly thicker at least than the stuff you find on the Vaporfly Next% 3. Ultimately, the rubber areas aren't showing anywhere whatsoever so far. That's probably what I'd expect. The outsole formula here is very grippy. I found it delivered some really nice traction on toe off. It's just a nice assured nature from the Hoka. Can't really fault the outsole too much. Perhaps Perhaps they could have extended back some of the foam you know into this sort of midfoot section aside from that it's looking pretty good and it's dead easy to clean as well just a nice hard bristle brush gets rid of any debris it's a big improvement in terms of the outsole over the original version of the rocket x though you have to say these two shoes are drastically different and it's a big step up from the carbon x as well I could never really understand what the fuss was about in that shoe. I've got a tiny bit of lateral heel side wear here, but it's pretty minimal. I'm not really all that worried so far. No sign of rain anytime soon, so I haven't been able to test the shoe out in those conditions unless I, you know, get the hose pipe out and sort of run around on my patio but i don't think that's going to make for the best content so in terms of a test in anger of the outsole on the rocket x2 you're gonna have to hold out for a little while longer most running shoes i don't really care about sort of keeping clean too much but this one's almost too beautiful not to do that so don't worry guys i will get the baby wipes out and clean it up and put it back in its glass case later on I won't put it into the glass case. So enjoying this one so far over a range of paces really, it was absolutely effortless on that longer, slower run. Anything from steady marathon pace up to 10k or even 5k effort, the shoe likes to be put through its paces and to go up through the gears. I'll have a few more comparisons on this shoe versus some of the other models in that range very soon for you. What have you made of the Rocket X2 so far? Is it one that's hitting the spot as a competitor to the Vaporfly or perhaps the Adios Pro series? Or has it not met your approval? Let us know down in the comments. Musical interlude time. Today comes from Eels, Useless Trinkets and b-sides compilation there's some fantastic tracks on here too many really to mention all of them lots of like alternative versions of famous eels tunes but it does feature their two great christmas tracks christmas is going to the dogs and everything's going to be cool this christmas hold on to that idea till december is a great version of the famous elvis track can't help falling in love on here and some brilliant live versions recorded at the bbc of various different tunes hospital food is particularly good Eels went through this period where they try to recreate some of their tracks using alternative instrumentation and some of the results are very interesting. Go and check it out guys from Eels Useless Trinkets. All that's left me to say is thank you for tuning in, it's always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. My name's Ed Bird and I'll be seeing you.
Hey people, so really enjoying the Rocket Axe 2. Just really working for me. It's one of those shoes, you know, why didn't I pick it up earlier? And that often happens. I wonder if that'll be the same with the Wave Rebellion Pro. All the viewers keep telling me to pick that up and the Cloud Surfer. So uh, I'll maybe try and get one of those this week. I'm still waiting on that Sen 9 as well. It seems to just have disappeared into the ether somewhere. So we shall see. But nice, easy pace today. Got out before it gets too hot. And then I've got some time to do some editing later on. So it's all about time management when you're uh, a human, I guess. But especially when you don't have a lot of opportunities to do the things that you need to do. So you've got to get them done when you can. Right. Catch you soon.